Good evening, everybody. How are we doing? Are you okay? Yeah. Brilliant. Good to meet. Good to see Andy's mom and dad. I don't gig in front of my mom and dad. <laughs> no, I just go shopping. I just go shopping. I've just been shopping with my mess. I love a good German supermarket. I love a good German supermarket. Yeah. It's great because you can you can pop out, can't you? If you love sort of cottage cheese and a hadron collider or something like that. Yeah. And we were in we were in the shops last night doing the, the weekly shop, me and the messes. And uh, we stood in the queue to pay. And there's this woman in front of us in the queue, and she's got this kid who can only be described as fellow. <laughs> <laughs> and all the time that they've been in the shop, he's been legging up and you know like they do, legging up and down the aisles, knee sliding like Peter K and everything. <laughs> And she's, she, just to shut him up, she's giving him a bag of, you know, Owen Brown cheese puffs, what's it's we call, yeah. Owen Brown cheese puffs from the chips. <laughs> and he's stuffing them in left, right, the centre. And behind us in the queue, there's this elderly woman. And she's looking at this kid. And she's got a face like a bulldog chewing a wasp. And you can read her mind as she's saying, that woman's got no idea how to parent a child. And just then, one of these what's it's goes down the wrong way. And the kid starts. <laughs> and he's turning blue. And the mother does no more than gets behind him, does the old Heimlich manoeuvre. Woof! Out shoots this partially digested what's it. And lands on the shoes of this woman on the other side. Which does little to improve her mood. I'm looking at her, she's snarling away. And the missus says, you don't look very happy. I said, well, what's your face? I've got frowns to the left of me. <laughs> <laughs> Chokers to the right. <laughs> and here I am, stuck in the little. <laughs> for you. Ah, <laughs> oh, I couldn't help myself, couldn't help myself. <laughs> No, I like, I like kids, I like kids, but, uh, you know, I, I, you might have noticed I'm a little bit older, but you know, I can't get the edge around some of the things that youth culture these days, youth culture, you must find it, you must find it. Anal bleaching, that's a thing apparently, anal bleaching, getting your arsehole bleached. Why? <laughs> Why would you do such a thing? There are people, there are people who spend thousands and thousands of pounds every year on sunbeds and on false tan, getting themselves brown. And the only bit that's naturally brown... <laughs> Turn white. <laughs> I mean, it's, not, it's not like when you go on your holidays, you come back with a tan, no one's going to look at your ass and say, Oh, you've been away. Very <laughs> 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 <Hey>, nice. <laughs> Tenerife, you know. <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. And then there's the practicality, isn't there? Do you do it yourself? <laughs> or do you get someone in? You know, professional like. I mean, I went on Trusted Trader. <laughs> Three times. Three times I put anal bleaching in there, so it turns off. Suspended the account now. <laughs> Blocked my access. Which strangely enough is a side effect of anal bleaching. 
I don't know. I don't know what you, what you type in. What you type in? I don't, I don't know. Where do these people train? Do they do a course at Hubert College? I, I, I just don't know. An MVQ or a VTEC? Oh, level. What you do? <laughs> That's got to be an embarrassing conversation with the careers teacher at school, is not it? What do you want to do when you leave school? <laughs> what am I bleach arseholes? <laughs> I don't know what qualifications I need. <laughs> oh dear. What's your Emily doing now? She's bleaching arseholes in boot. <laughs> oh lovely. <laughs> First one in our family. <laughs> So proud. <laughs> oh dear. And how do you know they've done a good job? I mean, I had mine done. Oh no, I didn't mean to, it was an accident. You know, it's like a domestic related splashback in the So I had 99% of it done. <laughs> You know they've done a good job. I tried. My arms aren't long enough. I've not got enough hands. Is it like when you go to the barbers and the fellow goes behind you with the little mirror? <laughs> Could you just take a little bit off the side? <laughs> I don't know. The good thing is I've got a mobile phone and an Apple Watch, so uh, I can turn the camera on from the watch. <laughs> it's not what Steve Jobs had in mind when he designed it, but you know, it works. <laughs> um, we don't talk about things like that in our house, not really, we have been married 36 years. Um, but what happened? How long have you been married together? 30 years. 30 years? Great, good stuff. So the thing is, when you've been when you've been together for a long time, you find yourselves sitting there in the evening, just watching the telly, and thinking, "Oh, that's a good idea. We should have a go at that." No, usually it's fairly innocent. <laughs> Something like the Great British Bake Off or Grand Designs. You say, "Look at that broccoli quiche, but with chorizo." <laughs> That looks nice. We should have a go at that. Or, I fold doors and then out onto a sun terrace. That looks nice. We should have a go at that. And then you'll watch a film like Sliver with Sharon Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Sex in the shower. <laughs> that looks nice. <laughs> we should have a go at that. <laughs> and while it might seem like a good idea at the time, quite frankly, the time was about 35 years ago. <laughs> and I still had some upper body strength, a bit of flexibility, and some cartilage in my knees. Now, health and safety nightmare. <laughs> We did a proper risk assessment, they'd condemn it. They say that's hazardous activity. The National Health Service is under enough pressure. <laughs> oh, see, the first problem, the first problem is I'm just under six foot two, and my wife's about five foot five. <laughs> now that's a very immediate and obvious shortfall of about nine inches. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not equipped to bridge that gap. <laughs> now, it's not a problem in the films, is it? It's not a problem. They're young and they're lithe and they're full of passion. They're thrown caution to the wind and she's got her arms around his neck and her legs around his waist. Well, it's not like that in reality. <laughs> the sad reality is it's like sticking 80 bags of sugar in a rucksack and wearing it back to front. <laughs> It's slippy in there. There's shampoo and soap and everything. 
Tell them nothing my age, stand on your own two feet, let alone somebody else. <laughs> Started wearing wellies. <laughs> you just keep filling up. <laughs> so I've moved on to my walking boots. It's, it's not the sexiest look, I'll grant you. But it's safer, they've got a Vibram sole and they're Gore-Tex. <laughs> This is the little shelter after it also. <laughs> Couple of grab handles. They're only 995 a pair at screw fix. <laughs> so what I've ended up with, the look I've ended up with is less sex dungeon and more disabled toilet. <laughs> we used to have a safe word. Now we've just got an emergency cord. <laughs> <laughs> little red triangle on the end. We don't want to catch that, honestly, because that goes straight through to care line. Next thing you know, you've got all the emergency services in your bathroom. Police, fire, and ambulance. And two crumpled, slightly damp bodies. <laughs> Someone's been filming a YMCA video that's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> but the worst thing is, I don't know if you've ever tried to snog your partner in the shower. It's like being waterboarded. <laughs> and then the, then the confessions start tumbling out. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I forgot to unsack the dishwasher. <laughs> Shut your system. <laughs> I didn't even think she liked me, sister. Keep going, keep going. Oh, sorry to make you cry. <laughs> Oh, no, no, yeah, I've better, got better be getting off. I think that's probably about my time because it's, it's uh, well, I was going to get the train tonight. Uh, I usually get the train to these because I've got a senior rail card now. <laughs> um, so it makes it a bit cheaper, a bit better for the environment. But you know, I, oh, I hate getting the train, especially if I've got to change. I, today, I was doing a gig the other night and I had to change, I had to change trains. I much prefer a direct train, but I had to change. And I'm sitting on the platform at the station, and I don't, know about, I don't know about you, but I find young people these days, they're just very inconsiderate, aren't they? And I, I'm, I'm an ex-smoker, I gave up smoking about 35 years ago, and I've sat on the platform there, so I hate the smell. And there's only one bench, I'm sat on the bench, minding my own business. These two girls come and sit there, and this fella comes and sits there. Next minute, these two start vaping. And it's these fumes, sweet smelling fumes billowing out. <laughs> Next minute, this fella lights up a cigarette. And I'm sitting there thinking, I've got clouds to the left of me. <laughs> <laughs> Smokers to the right. <laughs> and here I am. Stuck in the middle. <laughs> in crew. Ladies and gentlemen, you can all be ready to have some picture of the night. Peter Edge, everybody! One more time for Peter Edge. I really enjoyed that.